Good morning, party people. It is time for an office hours speed round where I'll go through and do very short answers to some of the questions that you've got out here on PollGab. Uh, let's see, first up, what are your top uses for running SQL Server in a container? DevOps, testing automated deployments. Do any of your customers run SQL Server in a container only in development environments? Next up, uh, Eduardo asks, do you also help customers migrate from SQL Server to Postgres? No, and no interest in doing that. Changing database backends is one heck of a lot of work. Next up, Rojo asks, we have a, a one terabyte database and an AG secondary and async. It gets behind due to index rebuilds at night. Should I be concerned? What's your RPO and RTO? How much data are you allowed to lose during a failover? And are you approaching that number? If the answer is yes, then you should be concerned. Candy says, what is your opinion on TraceFlag 834 for possible performance gains running bare metal 2019 Enterprise with half a terabyte of RAM? Test it, especially if you have a cluster. Uh, try it and go see what happens. And trace flags, they are kind of a pain in the rear to remove, but at least that way you can go play around with it back and forth uh, between a couple of nodes and go see how it goes, uh, measuring back and forth between uh, one or two. I, I say cluster, I mean always on availability group because it'll have separate SQL server servers services so you can have different trace flags set up on the different nodes. Uh, next up, Monterey, or I'm sorry, Monkey asks, you mentioned SQL Server doesn't phone home to Microsoft. To I didn't say that. I don't know, and I'm not about to check. In checking to see whether or not SQL Server phones home would involve running a wiretap on the network for an extended period of time, because of course you don't know when it's going to phone home. That's a problem that we had with the CEIP when that service went live. Hadar says, have any of your clients been fined big money for improper SQL Server licensing? Yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, Jack says, our code base has no lock statements everywhere. Uh, would switching to RCSI allow us to move the, remove those hints? Most likely, yes. Uh, next up, DBA Champion says, if a company wants to have three SQL servers on premises and then use them for three to five years, will it save money to do the pay-as-you-go billing model? No. Pay-as-you-go, if for, in terms of cost savings, is for bursty workloads for unpredictable periods of time, not if you know your workloads for the next five years in advance. Just like is it cheaper to rent a car or go buy one if you know you're going to use it for three to five years straight? Don't be a moron. I guess it's too late. You're already a moron for asking the question, right? I should probably move on to the next question. Uh, Frank asks, who's the Brentos are for all things MySQL? I have no idea. And I get that question all the time about MySQL and Postgres. I just have no idea. Next up, a uh, new folder asks, how do Postgres scaling options compare with SQL Server? I honestly don't know in terms of like Postgres in general. I use Amazon Aurora, which means that we can just turn up a little dial and boom, we have more power and it happens within seconds. Ricardo asks, would you rather work remotely again from Iceland or from a cruise ship? Me personally, because Iceland is like 98% covered by gig symmetric fiber, Iceland, because it's much easier to get a really good internet connection. Cruise ships don't have anything near approaching gig symmetric fiber. They have internet, but it's nowhere near as gig symmetric fiber with unlimited uh, uploads and downloads. Uh, let's see here. I think we'll grab one more. <laughs> it's funny. David says, who's the Brentos are of SSRS? Again, I have no idea. Oh, I can do several quickly. Uh, Luthen says, how often do you recommend checking the suspect pages table? I recommend you don't go look at monitoring things manually. This is what monitoring tools are for, right? They check and patrol things for you automatically all the time. Um, Negative Max says, what was your favorite past session this year? I didn't attend... I, that's not entirely true. I, I was going to say I didn't attend any, but I attended some just because they were in the room before I went to go and speak, Like, because I like to check the room's logistics before I go and get up on the stage there. I like to see how the microphones work, how the audio works, the video, all that. So I didn't attend any sessions this year at all. I just exclusively did the hallway track and uh, hugged all kinds of people that I missed. 
Cyril asks, would you consider teaching an unmastering Top SQL anti-patterns course? No, because people pay money. Because remember, I have to get paid. right? I know you think that I do this just for fun, but I, someone has to pay for all the cool stuff that I have. That person is you. <laughs> uh, so companies don't usually want to pay for how to do things wrong. So, And you might even ask yourself, would you pay $200 for one of my training classes if it was how to do things wrong? And I think most people would say no. However, right now I'm running my Black Friday sales. If you go to brentozar.com slash Black Friday, you, dear reader, you can actually pay me money to help satisfy my habits of wanting to drive Porsches. Man, bring a trailer just brought out a 1957 Porsche 356 Speedster. And I, I know the thing is going to be almost affordable because it's painted in the wrong color. It was originally shipped in silver and then somebody along the way painted it in black and it has the wrong engine. It was The engine was replaced at some point. I, man, that thing is probably going to be so close to me actually being able to afford it, but I need your help. I'm probably not going to do it, but who knows. I get drunk and I buy things. So uh, brentozar.com slash Black Friday. We have my newest uh, lineup for training classes, including a new lifetime option to buy my Fundamentals and Mastering Classes for Life and any new SQL Server Fundamentals or Mastering Classes that I bring out there as well. I have to put in the disclaimer SQL Server because there's always a chance that I might go build training classes on something else entirely, and that would be a, not included in that product. All right, so off we come back over to... <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, other ones I can ask quickly. Oh, Mr. SQL Seek says, what would be the determining factors to suggest that someone use Azure Data Factory for their data warehouse as opposed to SQL, fa SQL Server? Azure Data Factory isn't a uh, back end. So the first thing that you want to do is go search on YouTube for James Sarah. S-E-R-R-A, James Sarah Modern Data Warehouse. And there's a video that he has out there. I want to say it's about 30, 45 minutes long that explains what the different terms mean and where they make sense. That way that'll get you started on even using the right words. Uh, let's see here. Not close enough to retirement to stop learning, says I just got an architecture job. Congrats. Um, I think a key to success will be uh, being more well-read about tech trends. Typically, my reading has been problem-solution stuff. What do you subscribe to for staying up on larger trends outside a SQL Server? Uh, for me, Hacker News. Hacker News is really useful. And I know it's it's uh, there's a whole lot of noise inside the signal. I read it every single day. But if you read it every single day, you can kind of stay on top of where things are moving in the industry. That's Hacker News. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Todd says, what is your opinion on using things like Veeam for databases less than 500 gigabytes? I'm told I don't really get to choose uh, backup apps. I usually let the client choose. Um, my clients seem to be married to it, but my logs keep growing. Go read the manual. Go read the manual for Veeam because it's just not configured correctly. That's all there is to it. Uh, Dop or Dopinder asks, is DBA a recession-proof tech job? I don't know that anything's recession-proof, but I've been hearing from a lot of talking heads. And when I say talking heads, I mean people with, that haven't done real-world database administration in a decade or more. They're just standing up on a stage somewhere. They're like, database administration is a dying trend. And I'm like, no, that's just because you stopped doing it. I'm doing pretty well here. Thank you, says the guy who's just talking about buying a Porsche. Another Porsche. <laughs> um, next up, Frank asks, I've worked with maintenance plans and batch scripts to perform backups. In your experience, what would you trade? What would you tread for the other, especially on matters? What I would recommend for you is that before you start typing in questions, try to read them out loud and understand what it is that you're asking, because that's a hot mess of words. And then we'll do one other one. Uh, Sigrun asks, uh, one of our older databases on 2019 has two log files for some reason, both files on the same volume. One has autogrow while the other doesn't. Is there any risks or performance gotchas? If they're on the same volume, it's probably a legacy accident. You can get rid of one of them. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, that was our speed round. And now I will let you go about your day I won't really let you go about your day. Go. <laughs>
go check out my Black Friday sale over at brentosar.com slash Black Friday, and I'll be, I'll be looking over at Bring a Trailer. See you all next time. Adios.